What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. And it'll be that today, because we'll be going to Germany, a two hour drive to Köln, or Cologne, in Germany, where normally the FIBO will be held. But there's also a hardcore gym, muscle gym, over there. And Juan Rekers, one of our Vintage Genetics sponsored athletes, uh, actually came up with it. He knows the guys over there and was like, well, why not? Let's have a hardcore training over there. So I'm going to take you on that trip and show you what that's all about. I've never been there myself. Normally all the IVB pros who went to the FIBO to be at the booth go there to train. So it should be a pretty awesome gym. So let's check it out. <laughs> Alright guys, we are going to train the muscle gym in Cologne or Köln, whatever you want to call it. We're going to have an awesome chest workout. This is a gym where all the IVB pros go to after the FIBO, so let's do it. Alrighty, now it's actually time to begin the workout. And I actually switched up my workout split. Uh, I was supposed to do legs in this gym, but whenever I visit a new gym, I like training the chest the most because, you know, chest is still one of my favorite muscle groups to train. So what I did is I did legs before chest and I switched those two around and uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it went. So the day before I trained legs and here we're doing the chest because, you know, usually most gyms have a lot of chest equipment, um, you know, most hardcore gyms do, but just this gym pretty much had anything, uh, old school vibes for sure. So it's muscle gym in Köln in Germany. And they have all kinds of plates, different plates, different barbells, you know, different machines, very old ones. And uh, if you watch my Instagram stories, you could also see that they actually have the exact same leg extension and leg curl as we have in our own gym. And that proves that it's really old school because I got it from a guy who had it in a, in a, standing in a shed for like 30 years. So those are pretty awesome. But yes, guys, you can see me training with... Juan Rekers, he is a Dutch man, uh, owner of the company Dragon Coaching. He coaches people uh, with, uh, you know, mental uh, hardships and he tries to, you know, basically make them realize that you can do a lot more than you think using, you know, fitness, bodybuilding, working out, uh, unlocking potentials of them they didn't think they had before. And that works really great and he's a perfect ambassador for something like that. And that's also why I decided, we both decided to work together. And uh, this is just the beginning of our collaboration. And we both, uh, you know, we both really target very different groups. But at the same time, there's a big overlap as well. We both, you know, I'm, uh, a fan of golden era bodybuilding, old school bodybuilding, and he is literally someone who trained back in the day of when those guys were actually in their prime. So that's pretty an awesome combination. So I'm really proud he's wearing vintage genetics clothing. But anyway, we are here doing the chest. The first machine is this uh, hammer strength chest press. I've done this one in a previous gym before, and it's a pretty awesome exercise because it's not just a flat chest press, it's actually a decline 
chest press which makes it a really awesome exercise to do because it actually extends the range of motion this is one of the favorites uh, that Dorian Yates used to do as well I'm not sure if he did a decline bench press or, or this machine but he liked to do a decline press because that allowed for a greater range of motion pretty much a greater stretch in the chest because there's nothing in the way and this angle allows for a deeper stretch compared to for example an incline version now with the first exercise I like to really warm up so every every set we did a separate plate and we added a plate each progressive set so no matter what uh, muscle group that I'm working the very first exercise will have the most warm-up sets and as you guys know that every single time I work out now I have some warm-up sets some people like to call them feeder sets before doing one or two working sets on the exercise so here I uh, this is still a warm-up set but I wasn't sure how many reps I was able to do here or what kind of weight I could push on this machine so that's also a tip for you guys every time that you do an exercise you haven't done before or you haven't done in a very long while you pretty much have no idea what your max will be on that exercise so what you want to do is as many warm-up sets as you need to warm up properly and to acclimate to the maximum weight that's pretty much also where the warm-up sets are for in the first place you want to keep doing them so you get used to a heavier weight that you will do at the last uh, at the end of the exercise because if you don't it'll actually feel more difficult than it has to be some people believe that when when you say oh i'm only doing one or two sets on exercise that you literally only move the weight one to two times but that's not true so whenever you hear most pro bodybuilders say and who are serious say I'm doing one or two sets on exercise it means they are probably doing three to four maybe two warm-up sets before but they don't count that as sets because those are simply you know movements you do beforehand to warm up the muscle the joints getting blood in there and then the final one or two sets those are called the actual working sets those will work the muscle beyond what they were able to do previous time to stimulate muscle growth so pretty much the sets that stimulate and give an impulse to muscles those are called working sets and those are the only sets that are usually counted because the sets beforehand don't really cause any muscle growth at all but at the same time they are needed in order to get used to a heavier and heavier weight so you don't injure yourself and your muscles are able to push and pull more weight than if you didn't warm up so it's two birds in one stone and as you can see Kane of course is working out here as well whenever we go to a nice gym or hardcore gym or old school gym we try to go together so here's Kane my dad is filming I'm working out here and who is here as well so this is you know we're working out with three guys my dad had a little bit of a shoulder impingement so it's smart that he didn't train chest today never train when it hurts in the bad way to train anyway this is the second movement an incline movement so this is pretty much the same angle as a normal incline bench press except we're not using a barbell we are using these two handles which are converging as you press to the top so it kind of looks more like an incline double press but it allows you to really focus on the contraction as well usually with dumbbells it's more difficult to contract at the top because all the tension then goes to the joints and it's stacked upon the bones and the muscle would need to be contracted with your mind rather than the weight forcing the muscle to contract this exercise is a little different because you automatically when you push up you go inwards as well so it forces you into that direction and when it does that it enhances the way that the muscle contracts because that is the function of the chest to go forward and inwards at the same time that is when it works most efficient and it really feels very nice i also don't feel 
any shoulder pain with this exercise at all, which normally on a normal incline bench press with this angle, I would feel. So this feels pretty good going all the way down. And the grip isn't really that wide either because it's not possible to grip it any wider than this, but it still felt really nice. It allowed me to stretch the chest at the bottom and contract it at the top. And it's just a unique exercise, which I like to do when I'm in a different gym is to try out machines that look promising, but very different from what I'm used to. So it's a pretty awesome exercise to uh, include in any chest training if you have access to this movement, because it's simply another variation of an incline press because that's what I advise as well. When you do an incline double press or an incline bench press and you are reaching a plateau on that exercise, what you then need to do is find a different exercise that looks a lot like it and stop progressing on that exercise instead of sticking to the same exercise that you hit a plateau on. Because that way you won't move forward and we always want to progress. Now what you'll see here in a second and also what you saw with the hammer strength chest press is that when you go heavy and you also want to go deep with the chest exercise with the handles, you need to have people to help you out of the hole, out of the bottom. Because if you're able to do that yourself, then it's going to be, you know, the range of motion will simply be too short. Because if you're able to get under the handles yourself, that means that during the exercise, it'll simply hit the bottom because you're able to get there. You shouldn't be able to hit the bottom or anything to uh, you know, hit the weights on a dead end at the bottom because then the tension is lost and that's not what you want. And of course, when you're at an old school gym, you cannot do only machines. You have to do some free weights and here we are doing some double flies. Now, you will see that the three of us actually have a different way of performing this fly motion. Um, you know, and everybody has their own views on how to do it and their own uh, reasonings why uh, this motion differs. So for me, I'm doing it like this. So it's a hybrid in between a true fly and at the very bottom, I'm not keeping my arm in a fixed position, which normally you should do with the fly motion. But if I do that, I notice a lot of tension will be uh, put on the biceps at the very bottom. And when I do that, I simply have uh, irritated bicep tendons, which ultimately won't maybe progress in a lot of muscle groups. And I won't be able to do this exercise in any proper way. So I'm letting my elbows and my upper arms uh, you know, move a little bit at the very bottom, allowing the tension to be shifted from the biceps to the chest. Now, Juan here is doing it a different way. He feels that holding the dumbbells just like a normal dumbbell press, he feels the stretch a bit more in the chest because for him, uh, it doesn't put a lot of uh, stress on the biceps, but it puts it a lot more on the chest using it that way. So everybody has their own technique. And Kane here, he is holding the dumbbells a bit wider than I am. So he as well doesn't really have that issue with the bicep tendons. So what that does is it does make the weight a bit heavier because you have to remember the further the weight from your body is, the heavier it will feel, especially when you have longer arms, the weight simply will be heavier. So you don't want to just look at the absolute number of the on the dumbbells. You also want to look at how far the dumbbells are apart or away from the body. The same happens, for example, with a lat pull down. If your arms are all the way to the outside of the bar, it'll be a more dif uh, difficult exercise because the arms are further away from the body. Here it is even more extreme because it's a free weight. So literally, the further the dumbbell will be from the body, the heavier it'll literally be for the muscle to do. But at the same time, there will be tension on other muscle groups as well, which is what I want to avoid. So here I'm using mind muscle connection to go all the way to the bottom, feel the maximum stretch in the chest that I can achieve without irritating any other muscle group and then going all the way up until I feel the tension 
being lost because if you do go all the way up with a double fly you automatically lose the tension because then the weight is stacked upon the joints and the joints are in the muscle and that's not what you want to train so here Juan is simply doing another heavier set so you can see that he is still training pretty hardcore even though we are pretty much twice as young as his it doesn't matter, no matter what age you are, you can still train very hard and look very good because this is the example of that. So here, this is pretty much the last fly set that we're doing and you don't want to force yourself, um, you know, way beyond failure, way too often on the flies because it's an isolation movement. And what I just said about all the other muscles potentially being injured, it happened, for example, to Tom Platts you know how he trains, he trains very intensely and when you do it like that what happens is that you might hurt a weaker bicep, I mean a weaker muscle like the bicep instead of the chest that you're targeting and then you tear that muscle and it's going to be uh, you know, useless for bodybuilding purposes. And here we are doing the bench press, yes, not as the first exercise but actually as exercise number four. What it does, it allows you to use a lighter weight with the same relative tension on the chest. So what I'm meaning with relative is that it feels as heavy as you know a weight that's almost 50 kilos heavier, for example. And that's where mind-muscle connection comes in. Lots of people who train the chest and using the bench press as the first exercise, they don't feel the chest working at all. There's no blood in there yet. So the stretch you can get is a lot less noticeable. And you guys always know, as I always say, the better the pump, the better the stretch will be. But you have to look at this exercise right here. Now, if you watch closely, you can see that something is missing. So that's why it's important to always check the bar before doing a bench press. So this is still a relatively light weight, only a 10 kilogram plate difference but it felt like a ton of difference because if there's a slight imbalance and you're simply not used to training that way, then it's going to feel like an enormous difference and it can potentially injure the muscle that you're working. If you guys looked at the previous world record, someone tried to do an 800 pound bench press, but there was one plate uh, too little on, I believe, the right side as well. So because of that, he couldn't even perform the world record because even though he didn't really tear anything at all, it still took away so much strength that the entire attempt was messed up. And it kind of happened to me here as well. If you do one bad rep, the strength after that is declined by quite a large margin which uh, you have always have to look out for when performing the exercise. All right, now it's time to do some tricep work. And again, whenever I see an exercise that I haven't seen before, I like to try it out. But it does have to look like an exercise that actually does something positive for the muscle I'm working. So what does this look like? It looks like a skull crusher you normally do with an easy curl bar. Uh, you know, normally you do it flat on a bench with a barbell, a free weight, but this feels the exact same, but this time it's on a machine. And this grip is just like an easy curl bar, so it doesn't feel any different grip wise, but it does feel different tension wise, because even if you go all the way up, you still feel an active tension on the triceps compared to doing a regular skull crusher. The tension is pretty much lost at the top and you're trying to look for it at the very bottom where the stretch is occurring. And that's the and that's a big difference usually with machines that you can get a constant tension on the muscle throughout the entire range of motion. So no matter how high or deep how you go, you still feel an enormous amount of tension throughout the whole range of motion. So that is very important uh, as a distinction between uh, free weights and machines if your mind-muscle connection is lacking and you're still uh, starting out. Don't neglect free weights, but machines can help 
uh, accessing that mind muscle connection skill that you need to practice at the beginning of your uh, weightlifting or bodybuilding career because if you don't feel the muscle that you're working you might actually be using other muscles like in this instance you could actually use the shoulders or even the chest to try and just move that weight forward and I mentioned in the beginning that my dad wasn't working out with us but he still wanted to do at least one exercise on uh, this machine because it is a unique one and it's just nice to be able to feel something like this when you have never tried it before so this is also uh, you know a combination of a machine and free weight machine because it has uh, free weight plate you load up on there and that's what I always you know I prefer that we also have a chest press at our own gym that has plates so you can load it up a lot heavier than a stack weight where you just put the pin in there usually you max that out easily and then you have to add more weight upon it so if you can use plates that is always a lot easier to overload the exercise compared to a stacked machine okay this is the almost the final tricep exercise it's an underhand tricep pushdown and here there's proper lighting which allows you to see what part of the tricep is being worked so no matter what kind of pushdown you do you always work all three heads of the tricep but there's a difference on which head of the tricep you're emphasizing with a given exercise so here you can actually see that the small head is working but the long head here is getting more of a stretch and a better contraction compared to an overhand tries to push down for example or a rope push down so that's why i really like the underhand tries to push down if you have the correct handle for it so this handle isn't a straight bar but it's actually a curved bar and the curvature in the bar allows it to feel a lot better on the wrists you don't want the limiting factor on this exercise to be pain in the joints or the wrists because then it's a useless exercise you want to have the triceps be the limiting factor in the exercise and not the joints not the wrists or anything else so I already did the stack in the previous set of the tricep underhand pushdown so what do you do then the only thing you can do instead of increasing the weight is increase the volume and what I like to do when increasing the volume on an isolation movement is usually the 21s so it's 21 reps but not 21 regular reps so first you do 21 low reps so the bottom part of the range of motion then seven reps at the top part of the range of motion and seven complete reps and if you can still do seven reps in total after those first 14 reps you should simply keep going until you hit failure so sometimes you hit for example 28 reps but then those last reps after those seven reps should still be full range of motion reps in order to hit the full triceps and actually go to failure on the entire range of motion now who on here is using a different technique to go past failure because it's a too easy of a weight so first he does a close grip push down then he does a wide grip push down so he's using different angles to hit the triceps with to perform and go to failure instead of just hitting a straight set of 30 reps he's doing a different rep ranges for each type of tricep pushdown so he's ending it with the underhand tricep pushdown which is also a great way to make an exercise more difficult when the weight simply isn't there on the stack to make it so all right and then i like to end the tricep movements usually with a unilateral movement and i always like to do a unilateral movement at least once in an arm workout or pretty much any workout that i do for example here with the chest we did the the flies so that still is pretty much two unilateral movements at the same time because you're holding the dumbbell in each hand free weight so they're both doing their individual work instead of being connected by a bar like a normal bench press for example but the unilateral movement allows you to work on a weak point so for example if the left tricep would be smaller you first start out with the left tricep you hit for example 15 reps and you match the same reps with the right arm so that you don't uh, create imbalances and of course when Huan is there there's always going to be something interesting going on in this case the photographers 
uh, persuaded him to uh, beat a hammer down with like a big wooden hammer so you can actually take some nice action pictures as he usually does a lot of photo shoots and this is just one of his many schemes that he likes to perform but yes as i said before try to work on your weak points with the unilateral movements here and also look at how i'm performing this exercise the upper arm isn't staying perfectly still in fact it's moving quite a lot some people might look at this and think well he's using momentum to move the weight but what i'm actually doing is i'm using the fact that the tricep is attached to the shoulder joint as knowledge because when the shoulder is then moving upwards you're actually stretching the long head more than if you would keep the shoulder static so that's what you want to keep in mind if you always hold the upper arms uh, in your side you will never reach the true full range of motion i have to say it is not super easy to know how far upwards you need to move your upper arm so just start with you know varying it a few degrees actually feeling out when you get a better stretch and also feel out when you go up way too high and then it actually involves only the shoulder and not the tricep anymore and of course since Juan did it as well I wanted to try it out myself and yes I know my form isn't perfect it was the first time I ever did it but it still was something fun to do, just wanted to do that for fun. And uh, I don't know, some pictures were taken of it, but I just did it for fun. So don't criticize me too much on the form if you can help it. All right, that was the workout in this gym. As you can see right here, it's just just like you would expect from an old school hardcore gym in the middle of Germany, uh, close to where the FIBA was being held. So nothing fancy, but sometimes that's not what you're looking for in a workout. Just a good atmosphere. Good equipment is good enough for most people. All right, guys, here we see the post-workout meal. 300 grams of rice, a little bit of vegetables, and 250 grams of white fish after this chest workout. So no added fats, we will have that in a meal after this. All right, that was the video of today, guys. I want to thank you a lot for watching, and there will be a lot more content of both me, Juan, and a lot more people in the future, but you will definitely see the both of us a lot more often so check out his instagram at juan rekers i put it in my description as well so check it out beneath the video and again thank you for watching don't forget to stay good